a diffeomorphism, so T is invertible, differentiable. And the feedback for the law, so U is alpha of X plus beta times V. Under this transformation, X will be mapped to two sets of variables. So Xi and Phi, such that the dynamics of the current variable is purely linear. A Xi plus V, V. And uh, this is, uh, if the relative degree is R, so this is R by R, this is R by 1. The output is related to Psi, so this is a linear map between the input and the output, not between the input and the entire states. So the difference, the rest of the states, which is phi dynamics, is nonlinear and evolving on its own. There is no input here. So this is n minus r, the rest. We showed last time that this is unobservable, and we related this unobservability for linear systems to Paul zero cancellation, all of that. So uh, the technique that we learned was constructive in the sense, OK, here is the x's, how to go and construct your epsize. So uh, epsi1 was your output function. Epsi2 is the output derivative, and so and so. Epsi r is the r minus 1 derivative. And uh, here is the control law, the feedback control law. So by definition, this gives you epsi1 dot is epsi2, epsi2 dot is epsi3, and so on. So, and using this feedback control law, that you, by definition of a relative degree, we have this guy, LG, LF, R minus 1. H is non zero, so I can divide by, and I will cancel my nonlinear dynamics after R derivatives of the output. So this is R, H, plus V. So under this control law, Psi R dot is just V. So the system is purely linear. And then we said we're going to construct. So this is the Psi, the first part of the dynamics. We're going to construct N minus R, the rest, independent phi's, such that each phi is linearly independent of all Psi's. And its dynamics is void of the input, so L G phi is zero. So this, in particular, this is a linear differential equation, gives you phi. The Epsilon dynamics is completely linear, is controllable, you can do whatever you like with this new input V. The phi dynamics is evolving on its own, so to ensure stability, we must check the zero dynamics and by the zero dynamics here, we mean if psi is identically zero. So the zero dynamics is phi dot is some function of phi and zero. This must be stable, right, on its own. Must be asymptotically stable. And if it's the case, we call the system what? Anybody remembers? If it's asymptotically stable, we call the system what? If the zero dynamics is stable. Anybody remembers? Just two days ago. Many on phase. Okay? So let's have an example. And we related how this idea of minimum phase, how it's related to uh, the notion of linear systems that the zeros also lie in the left half plane. So example, x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot, so this is like the summary of last lecture, right? I mean, aside from the technical details, of course. This was, <clears throat> OK. We have here, uh, say, x3 minus x2 cube, negative x2, and say, x1 squared minus x3. This is your f, your g, 
like this. And uh, like I said before, the output, the output is something that is typically dictated upon you, right? The output is the thing that you can measure. But if you have freedom, let's try to define what is a good output here. What do you think? Is x2, if I define x2 as the output, what would be the relative degree? If x2 is my output, what would be the relative degree? One. Just one, right? Because it's input directly appears. What about x3? It's the same, right? And we don't want the relative degree to be smaller. Because you will have two other states that are unobservable. So I will define my output here to be x1. So this is uh, so the system now is not complete. If you want to do input output with uh, linearization, you need to define your output. So here's my output is x1. Typically, it's the thing that you can measure. But if I have freedom, I will define it to be x1, hoping that I will get relative degree two. Obviously, it's not one, right? Because there is zero here. So my y dot is x3 minus x2 cube plus 0u, so it's not relatively k1 for sure. Now I can define it again, I can differentiate again. So it's x3 dot minus 3x2 squared x2 dot. So x3 dot is x1 squared minus x3. Minus 3x2 squared x2 dot is negative x2 negative u, and so I have here also plus u, right, for x3. And uh, so the result is y double dot, let me continue with that, y double dot is what? x1 squared negative x3 plus 3x2 cube something, let's call it a, plus the coefficient of u is 1 plus 3x2 squared. This is multiplying u. So this guy is not 0 for all x. So the system has relative degree 2. OK? Now please, if you have any questions, tell me. So now I can define my psi. That's, that's great. I can define my psi. So my psi 1 is the output y, which is x1, my psi2 is y dot, which is x3 minus x2 cube. This, this is the coordinate transformation, OK? And uh, these guys, psi1 dot is psi2 by definition, and psi2 dot is v. But in order to make it v, I have to cancel the nonlinear dynamics here. I have to say u is whatever left here, negative a plus v divided by this term, 1 plus 3x to the square. So I give you the, the feedback control law. Now, a big portion of the system is linear, and I must worry about the unobservable part. Okay? Any questions so far? So now the output is the output is just epsilon 1, the first state. Here. So I have a linear relation between the input and the output. It's just 1 over s squared mm -hmm. in the s domain, right? Or uh, y double dot is v. That's it, OK? What is the rest of the system? For the rest, we, we need to construct the rest, which is just one state here. Phi that is independent of its size and LG phi 0. So let's do LG phi 0. So here, LG phi is 0. This is the remaining dynamics. So please pay attention here. This is the g, OK? So I multiply 0 partial phi partial x, negative 1 partial phi partial the second, plus 1 partial phi partial the third is 0. And what is an obvious solution here for phi? Phi is a function of x1, x2, x3. Derivatives. x1 is a solution, obvious solution. But we will not take it, right? Why? 
because it's it's one of the websites. It has to be independent of websites. But x1 is epsi1, so I'm not taking it. How I solve it? Well, it's super easy. Let's do the our usual way. So I have dx2 divided by the coefficient equal dx3 divided by the coefficient. So you have here x2 plus x3 is constant. So I can take my phi to be any function of x2 plus x3 in particular, just take it as x2 plus x3, right? Like we did last time. So this is my phi. Any question of how to get your phi? So let's get its derivative. Phi dot is x2 dot plus x3 dot. Please, if you have a question, stop me. x2 dot is negative x2, negative u, plus x3 dot is x1 squared, negative x3 plus u, and by construction, by construction, the u will disappear, must disappear, right? This is like a check for you. So phi dot is x1 squared, so phi dot is x1 squared, minus x2 plus x3, so please write it in the new coordinates. x1 squared in the new coordinates is epsi1. x2 plus x3 together actually they are phi. So here is the unobservable dynamics. <coughs> phi dot is epsi1 squared minus phi, right? So this is my transformed system. I found the transformation that gets me from x to two pairs, epsi where the dynamics is purely linear, and phi that is unobservable. This is unobservable by the epsi, and it has no input effect. It evolves on its own. The remaining question is, well, if you want to drive epsi to zero, we want to make sure that this guy doesn't ruin anything. And how we check that by the lemma that we had last time? Just set epsi equal to zero, and check the dynamics of its own. So the zero dynamics in this case is what? In this case, the zero dynamics, set epsi equals zero, you get phi dot equals what? Negative. Negative phi, which is? Is it stable or unstable? Stable, right? Yeah. Uh, just the uh, eigenvalue one. So this is stable. And if the zero dynamics is stable, we said the system is called what? Minimum phase. So our system is minimum phase. You can go and design uh, any control law V that drives psi to zero, and we have a lemma that ensures that the entire system will go to zero nicely. This will not blow things up. So, any question? This is the summary of how you apply the techniques that you learned last lecture. Any question? Okay. You have some time to write, I will raise the, this thing and we will start a new topic of today's lecture. This is just a, an example of what we had last time. It's cool, but the interesting part to me was the connection with linear systems, the unobservability, both zero cancellation and the minimum phase and all these kind of things. Okay. Today's lecture is about uh, stabilizability. So making things stable. So to make things stable, we need to define first uh, what is stability. We we going to review the rigorous definitions of stability. So this is review of stability notions. Review in the sense that uh, so this is I know that most of you didn't even take 270 years which is linear systems, but the right the right evolution, the right curriculum should be linear systems, nonlinear systems 1, which is 275, and then 276. So jumping a lot. So in 275, we should, you know, just get the very baby steps. What is the main differences between linear and nonlinear systems? That there is finite scale time, there can be multiple equilibria, and each equilibria has different characteristics, and so on and so. And one of the main important things is the stability notions. So a review here means review of 275 stuff, which you guys didn't take, so it's not actually a review, but some of you know these things. And luckily 275 will be taught next year, and hopefully we'll make it 
every year after that because it's a very important course. So uh, we have a system like uh, x dot equals f of x. There is no input now. And I will, I will, I will now on in this lecture, I will remove all this underline for an array because everything is an array actually. So, so actually x is an rn and f is a map from rn to rn. And I have an equilibrium point. And this is uh, very well known, but you know x naught is an equilibrium point. Means that f of x naught is zero, right? For any equilibrium point, we have the following: x naught is stable. So this is the definition of stability of an equilibrium point. Sometimes we call it the Yapon of stable. And this can be anything. So if for every epsilon there exists delta such that if you start within delta, you stay within epsilon. So if you start here, my x of 0, 0 equivalent to time, my initial condition is a little bit away from the equilibrium. If I'm at the equilibrium, I'll stay there forever, right? But if I disturb a little bit, but this is small enough, this implies that the response x of t will be always close to the equilibrium for all time. So uh, this is, uh, say, this is uh, my x naught. You give me an epsilon. You give me a tolerance, like 10 to the power negative 6. OK, so here is 10 to the power negative 6. This is epsilon. You, as a user, give it to me. Make it stringent the way you like. 10 to the power negative 6. I give you, for every epsilon, there must be a delta. I give you delta. Say, OK, if you, if you want your solution to stay within this neighborhood, OK, please start in this neighborhood. So this is delta. So if you start here, I'm sure that this is mu x of 0. I'm sure that the trajectory will stay within the black circle for all time, OK, x of t. This is the definition of stability. So it's basically bounded response. But it's more than bounded because uh, you can control this bound. If you want to be, if you want it to be bounded within 10 to the power negative 6, OK, I can tell you how far you should not exceed in the initial condition. If you want to be 10 to the power negative 20, OK, I, I can also, I can always do it, OK? Shrink it. So this delta really depends on epsilon. Any question about that?